Hello, welcome. So my name is Jeff, though in the comic community I'm normally known as Frank, Frank Coffee, Frank Castle, because Punisher, it's kind of become a pseudonym of mine of sorts. Early 2020 is when I formed the, the company online primarily for the entirety, and then just this last August of 2022, I got the brick and mortar store itself. Strangely enough, the pandemic kind of gave me opportunities that I might not have had prior to it actually happening, which actually helped, I think, my business on a way because more people were kind of locked in their homes. They were reaching out to social media, and that's really where I kind of found a little bit more of my success on that. Coffee in a Comic was not just an idea, but it was a habitual thing that I started doing more so in my life. I've always read comics and I've always drank coffee since I was like eight. But when it came to the idea of coffee in a comic, I used to sit around and read the Wall Street Journal, have my cup of coffee in the morning. Well, the news got a little chaotic over the last few years. I switched a little bit more into channeling away from that to get more of a positive feel of life. But the big cataclysm that hit is in December of 2019, I believe it was, my mother was diagnosed with lung cancer. And when I came back to California after um, meeting with her, it hit like it would hit anybody. You know, your mom's got cancer and you start reflecting on your own life and what you do. So to help with that, I started going down, down to the beach here in Huntington Beach um, to get a cup of coffee. And I would take a comic book with me, like one of mine from my own personal collection. I'd go down and just sit there for 15, 20 minutes, whatever it took to read that comic. And that helped me find kind of solace in, in all the the trauma that I was dealing with and the, the chaos within that. And so I started that every morning. I would go down there. And that kind of spawned into me posting things on social media. I found more people in the comic community that were also looking for outlets based on certain things happening in their life and met quite a few good people. But then I started posting my coffee in a comic. And people started commenting on it. And they were like, hey, are you selling that book? And I was like, no, not really. That's my personal collection. But that was like, okay, well, is there something here? Well, on another time, I went back to talk to my mother. And we started talking about, like, did she have a happy life? You know, what are some things maybe she would have done different? And she was like, well, yes, I did. My kids made me the happiest I could be. Well, I came back from that and was like, well, what's going to make me happy? What What's what's something so I decided to take a risk and invest my entire life savings and everything I had and the hours of work to form a comic shop um, not knowing what was going to happen of it and started very slowly garnering more and more attention and started making the sales unfortunately I had two circumstances occur last year in 2022 first was my father passed away unexpectedly we were all focused on my mom's condition and her lung cancer and we kind of overlooked some of his health conditions that were happening so after my father passed away unexpectedly it kind of shifted a lot of things really fast i took a small pause to go back for the funeral to go back be with family and navigate that and then nearly a month later after my father passed my mother ended up passing away at the same time, I was negotiating getting the lease for the comic book shop itself. And the plan was to bring her out to show her the, the store and to hopefully enjoy that with her because we were hoping that she had another year to live. And unfortunately, she had passed away in the arms of my sister. Um, luckily, she was there to be able to be with her. But that's really what spawned the coffee and a comic experience. And that's why I still give free coffee with every purchase to everyone. And I'll never charge for my basic coffee that I do give out um, because it's more of an ode to my mom, to my dad, <laughs> the ones that made me love coffee in the first place, but also um, an element to bring me back to the childlike elements of enjoying comics on a whole other level. 
my suggestion for anybody that's looking to get into comics is to have them ask themselves a few questions first. Number one, what's the reason you're getting into the comics and comic community? Is it because you want to read? Is it because you are more of a collector and you used to collect basketball cars, now you want to collect comics? Or is it just strictly for the investment purposes? And that's going to help narrow down a number of factors of what it is you're seeking or what you might actually purchase from a comic book shop. The readership portion of it is where I focus mostly, mainly because that's an area that I'm more attuned into because I love reading. I do collect, I have my own collection at home as you can see on the wall here as well, but reading has been the primary source. So I have them ask themselves questions of what are their interests? Do they like horror movies? Do they like fantasy films? If they're sci-fi, fans, then I say, hey, pick up a couple Star Trek books and I can recommend a few different areas. Um, Star Wars possibly as well. If you're into horror, then I would suggest picking up like a new series like Something is Killing the Children or Philadelphia that might attune to your liking as well. The Sandman by Neil Gaiman is my favorite series of all times and I find that's one I do recommend to everybody and I have yet to have one person say, I didn't like that. It's all subjective to art. It's like when you go into a museum, do you like Picasso or do you like Van Gogh better? So it really comes down because I don't want to give somebody a horror book like Philadelphia when they hate horror. They'd rather have some more, you know, Disney kind of stuff. I think the interest in creator owned comics has actually spiked a lot um, due to, I think, the pandemic was one thing that actually increased the popularity because more people were inside, they had that time to create more. They found other avenues to actually get their um, creative elements out to the public, such as uh, Kickstarter campaigns, and they were able to go on social media and promote it through those avenues. And it's been a great place for a lot of people to get their information out there. Though digital comics have gained in popularity, there's still a big physical popularity. We find a lot of people are still going back to the physical tactile comics. Now sales have hindered a little bit because of digital sales. I've seen the impact myself where customers have gone to other outlets to start reading digitally. But I find also there's a lot of people that start reading digitally that have never read comics and they actually then come in and want to get the physical copies and find that aspect. Old issues typically come into a comic book store through collections that owners purchase from other people. New issues come in through the main distribution centers or other you know creators that are, are creating them. Finding the algorithm, if you want to call it that, to navigate how to bring in what comics when, first you look at what are customers requesting. So if you are a member of like Pullbox and find coffee in a comic on Pullbox, you request the comics that you want to get for the future. I bring them in and then we purchase them. Um, and then if I notice like it's a popular comic, I might order one or two extras for other customers that might come in. If it's not so much of a popular comic, then I probably won't order any more than just that. It comes down to what I've heard and keeping my ear to the grindstone, like in the comic community, what's coming out, what's gonna be popular. Then I try to, it's, it's like buying anything for a business. You're taking a risk. So I might buy 10 copies of XY comic and that comic might not sell at all because nobody's into it. I tend to sometimes make selfish purchases though. Um, when it comes to like Punisher comics, I always buy way more than I probably should because I wanna push that onto other people because I'm a huge fan. It's a fine, then you got to find and balance for business because you don't want to overspend on stuff that's not going to sell or you're going to be stuck with a ton of inventory that you just can't get rid of. So. Comic books are for readers, but we're also a big collector based community. And so one of the reasons why a company like DC might put out a Superman number one and only print 200,000 copies, one, that's how many they think they're gonna sell, but also if they can notate that we're only putting these out and that's all that's gonna be sold, that makes that Superman number one potentially worth more in the future. Again, it's potential, but that's kind of the aspect of how that works. But as far as bringing in out of print kind of stuff, the only way most shops get that kind of stuff is through buying collections from other people that have collected comics for a while. And then when you do bring those into the store, it's a time consuming process because within the comic community, for the most part, people, when they're looking for out of print 
um, stuff, it's either A, they want it to fill their collection or read part of that story. You got somebody that wants it in their collection for collectible purposes and then the possible investment side of it as well. So depending on where you fall in that category, if you're just a reader, you'll come in and buy any kind of copy as long as you've got it. It doesn't matter the condition, the format generally, if there's a tear in it, they don't mind because they just want to read it. But if you're that collector or even investment type, they want it in pristine condition that's actually going to possibly hold value or create value down the, down the future. Adding more to this community is what I aspire to do. I want to add as much value as I can. And I, I feel like I've been doing that. Um, and I always look for constructive criticism from those to be the best comic book shop that I can make it become. My entire life I've been reading comics, my entire life I've been going into comic book shops and being, being treated essentially like an outcast. I've never felt like a comic book shop was ever a welcoming place. So that's something I want to add more to this community to be able to be that for people that come into my store so I can treat everyone on equal footing when it comes to comics, whether you're a lifetime reader or brand new. I want you to feel comfortable here. But part of it is also trying to spread a calming message for people. I know coffee gives you a little anxious, but there's an element to drinking a hot cup of coffee, reading that comic, and just enjoying that solace by yourself. And so I want to spread that kind of zen-like message because that helped me through a lot of trouble times. And if there's anybody else out there dealing with other family matters or just personal issues, I find that finding a way to meditate in a cup of coffee in a comic is really what I, I want to help the rest of the world kind of garner and love and find some of that so it comes down to a, a positive and caffeinated life i guess i'm pretty much here 24 7 i kind of live in this store for the most part uh, you can also find me online at instagram is the biggest i guess social media platform that i i contend with normally and that's the best way you can reach me um that's coffee and a comic most social medias you can find me on and then also coffeeandcomic.com.